Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to look at ChatGPT 4 with Canvas. What is it? How to use it? Why you should use it? And what's all the hype about? So let's get into it. So if you open up ChatGPT and a new chat and you go to the drop down for all the models, you're going to see this model called 4 with Canvas. If you don't see it, it's likely because you're not on the paid plan because I believe it's in beta versions. It's only being rolled out to the accounts on the paid plan. But don't worry, we got you. We're going to go over exactly what it is, what you can do with it and see if something you want to look into. If we go go to for canvas uh, we see pretty much like what we would see in general chat GPT literally everything looks the same do we have suggestions for what we can do with chat GPT create an image make a plan brainstorm code get advice analyze images help me write and whatnot so nothing's different but if we write a prompt for example let's say we ask chat GPT to write a blog post on how rapid development in gen AI is going to impact humanity in 50 years just a random topic now things are looking different now we have a new window open up within chat GPT which is akin to like Claude's artifact so it's very similar to what you would see when you use Claude's artifact where you have like a chat sort of happening on the side and then the other side you have like the whole sort of new window open up but this window is slightly different than Claude's window this one is called canvas because you can collaborate with the AI on this canvas so here we have a blog it's all text but if you look at the right here we have a few new options which you have probably never seen before we have an option to change the length of the document we have an option to change the readability of the document add emojis or polish it or suggest edits. So let's quickly go over all these features. So when we hit suggestions button, it's going to basically review its own writing and give us some suggestions on what we can change or how we can rewrite or like, you know, just a way to sort of structure the document. We have an option to either apply the suggestions or just ignore them by hitting cross. That's fine. The other option here is like changing the length of the document. So if you just click on it, you have an option to make it longer, make it shorter. It's going to maintain the whole core ideas of whatever it wrote before, but you can adjust the length based on whatever you're looking for. Or again, if your audience is not what you're looking for, like maybe it wrote it super professionally or like it wrote it too, too plainly for you, you can just go ahead and change the readability level by just sliding the scale from kindergarten to like gradual level. So basically what it's trying to do here is like, instead of us trying to like prompt every time or like, having a best prompt or whatnot from the very beginning it's giving more intuitive way to sort of control the output that we're getting from ai and the whole experience sounds a lot more collaborative as we saw with the suggestions part where it's sort of suggesting things and whatnot and we can and what we can do with it or i can just use this emoji button and like throw a whole bunch of emojis in here i feel like there's way too many here i wish there's a way to control that this is a text editor as well which you probably haven't seen before all we just get is the output from the AI, but here, this is like a text editor. I can like just start typing whatever I wanna type here and uh, I can edit it, you know, like whatever AI is writing. So it's like a doc within ChatGPT. And if I'm ready with like my own writing and the AI is writing and its suggestions, I can do like polish button. And now it's just gonna like do a final review of the whole document and it's gonna polish it for me. So I can be ready with whatever I was gonna use the document for, be a blog post, essays or whatever. Yeah, so this is how the writing piece works. Again, it's useful for like copywriting work or like any brainstorming work. It's very collaborative as we can see like with all these new features. But for anyone who's into coding, it gets better. Let's say I have the sample code for like a function to build like a notes app, kind of like Notion, where you can just use a forward slash command to do anything. So here, uh, once I use my prompt, I'm gonna get the code. But again, we have a new window in the canvas mode, unlike the previous regular chat GPT stuff. And here I can either select the part of the code I actually want to understand. Maybe I'd be like, select the code and just like, hey, can you explain what's going on here? Or I can select the code and be like, hey, can you fix a bug here? Or like, hey, can you like change this to something else? So I have that option, but we have some new options. This is similar to some options we saw for the writing document stuff, but this is very specific to all the coding work. We have options to add comments, add logs, fix bugs, porting the code to a different language, or just peer reviewing the code. If I go add comments, it's gonna literally go through all the codes and it's gonna add comments in green for every single line of code, pretty much. So again, it makes the code a lot more readable. And uh, if you have your own code that you're writing outside of it, just copy paste it if that's not sensitive information and you're okay with that and then just ask you to write the comments and you have all your comments done or if you have a code and you just want to like go through the testing and stuff add it to add the logs now we have a bunch of print statements so when you run the code in console you're gonna get all those print statements and you don't have to like manually think about what to insert when and like how to sort of like test that out 
it's gonna do it for us. Or, you know, or just simple as like whatever code you have here, put it in, ask you to fix bugs. It's gonna sort of like go ahead and start identifying the bugs that code might have and start giving you those recommendations and fixes to can make your code uh, run bug free faster. The other option is uh, of course, you know, like again, killing more startups where you can just like put in your code, you can ask it to port it to a different language. So if an options for C++, uh, Java and all that stuff, you can just change your code from whichever course, like source code that you had into a different language. Again, I would probably like run some other commands after this to make sure the code is actually working and the, the translation kind of happening correctly. But at least you have a draft, first draft to kind of go off of. And the last one is kind of cool. So here we have a code review. So as soon as uh, you have your code that's all ready to go, just do a code review. Now it's gonna identify what could be certain issues. Now it's basically like your senior dev or your junior dev based on how skilled you are and what kind of recommendations you're getting. But it's kind of telling you what you should change or maybe look into in your code here. You can either apply those changes and it's gonna do it automatically or you can choose to ignore it. So it's very similar to that suggestions feature for all the writing tasks where it's sort of like giving us some recommendations and suggestions on what we should do or could do and then doing it for us. It's kind of funny though, cause like AI yeah, wrote the code itself in the first place but I guess like the prompt was very generic so maybe it didn't really consider all those different cases that it's recommending us right now after the peer review but one thing is clear like chat GPT is clearly going toward the whole like collaboration thing and they want us to just stay within chat GPT and not use other apps I think the product team has done really well with the research in terms of like what are the common workflows for people within chat GPT and trying to like build all that internally so like the whole canvas is literally going to be one stop shop for anybody working with AI so of course, whatever's happening within ChatGPT is great. And if we want to integrate that to other applications, we can just use Zapier and connect ChatGPT with it and make all the magic happen. But yeah, I personally like the direction uh, where this is going. I think all these features were quite intuitive in terms of what you can do and like how fast your workflows can be accomplished and how like a lot more workflows are being considered into the user interface. And we're kind of moving away from like maybe like more fine-tuned prompting or like prompt engineering to be more intuitive user interface. So the work can be a lot more seamless while working with AI as I said, in a more collaborative way uh, within their Canvas interface. So like the video, if it sparked ideas, you learned something new, give a thumbs up. And for more AI tools and tutorial stuff, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next videos.